much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to everyone here and those of you watching at home. We just want to thank God that we're here together again in His presence. We are all blessed and highly favored. Oh, Father God, we just want to thank you. We just want to bless you. We just want to honor you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. If you could just stand on your feet and let us pray, please. Let us, let us pray. Let us glorify God this evening. He is worthy to be praised. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, we stand on your word, my Lord and my God, on Psalm 46. Father God, we stand on your word in Psalm 46, 10. Oh, Lord, be still and know that I am God. My Lord and oh my God, help us to be still and know that you are God. Oh, King of oh King, in Exodus 14, 14, you said that we should not, we should be trusting you, Father God. Oh, my Lord and oh my God, you said, Father God, you will fight for us. You will fight for us that all we have to do is to be still. Father God, help us to be still tonight, Lord. No matter what we're going through, Father God, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we hear, no matter what we see, no matter what our circumstances is father god let us just stand in all of you in our trust in you in our faith in you father god we as christians what we stand on father god is your word and let your word come alive in us this evening let your word come alive in us my lord oh my god when the enemy whisper in our ears let us be able to stand and fight against the enemy with your word the sharper than any devil double-edged sword lord we thank you we bless you we honor you Yes, Lord, let your word come alive in us that no matter what's going on, Father God, we stand on your word and we stand and trust in you and we stand in faith in you and you alone. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship Jesus today. Are you ready to worship Him, church? I couldn't hear you, so are you ready to worship Him? So let's do it today. Hallelujah. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I met you.
worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to read a Bible verse right now. So just... I just like reading a Bible in my house this week. And when it just like... Got the message that we are going to sing. Just, just keep going, Jade. Maybe just, yes. <laughs> and I want to just read like the verse of the Bible. And just John chapter 11, verse 38 says, says, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord said Martha, the sister of the dead man. But th by this time, there is a bad smell, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that you, if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me I knew that you always hear me but I said this for the, the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me when he had when he had said this Jesus called in loud voice Lazarus come out Lazarus to them, take off the grave, clothe and let him go. That's our God. That's our God. Lazarus, come out! Lazarus, come out! Lazarus, come out! Lazarus, come out! I just sing the bridge again of the song so now you can understand why you're a singer right now Jesus just saying to you come out doesn't matter your situation doesn't matter what you're passing through right now come out he just bring your life again he just bring life into your, to you again amen just let's sing again I need a rescue my sin is heavy but change Break out the weight of your glory. I need a shelter. I was an orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was born. to the dry bones come alive come alive thus says the Lord come alive come alive come alive come alive 
dry bones come alive, come alive, we declare, come alive, dry bones come alive, come alive, come alive, I can feel redemption on the wind forgiveness like a tide rolling in taking up the space where shame has lived receiving all that you died to give let the wind blow let the tide roll till the earth knows you're a God of love. Let my dry bones sing a new song. All the glory to the God of love.
I need you more, more than yesterday. I need you more, more than words can say. I need you more than ever before. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you more. Can you sing it, church? More than yesterday, I need you more. More than words can say, I need you more than ever before. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. More than the air I breathe, more than a song I sing, more than the next heartbeat, more than anything, Lord, can you slow by it? Yes, I'll be by your side, cause I never want to go back to my I need you more, more than yesterday, I need you more, more than words can say, I need you more, than ever before, I need you more, I need you more, more than yet I breathe.
you need more of his presence, just, just open your mouth right now and just say, I need you, Lord. I need you more. I need you more. I need you more. I want more of your presence, Lord Jesus.
sickness. It defeated the grave. It defeated poverty. It defeated sin. That name is worthy. We just want to sing that tonight. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your You 
tonight is touch of God and I, I really believe the Holy Spirit wants to touch hearts tonight with his presence with his healing touch tonight he wants to set you free in your body he wants to set you free in your mind tonight so just get your expectancy out there tonight amen hallelujah thank you Jesus Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You know, we're doing things just a little differently tonight because I think that's it's important we just go with the Holy Spirit. You know, I just, just come back down from Belfast. Uh, we had a, a prayer this afternoon outside City Hall. There was probably, I don't know, 300 people or so there gathered praying and crying out to God for this, this island, north and south, praying for revival, praying for awakening, praying for repentance praying for change and it was it was just so wonderful to be able to stand there and pray and 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 lift our, our voices to the Lord and and stand in the gap for this nation because you know the Bible has promised that you know if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I'll forgive their sin I will heal their land and you know, we're believing for this land to be healed. We're believing for this land to be awakened. And, and so, Lord, we just thank you, Father. We stand in the gap tonight for Ireland in Jesus' name. 
We stand in the gap for a, a great awakening, Lord God. In Jesus' name, a great awakening, Lord God. Let there be a great awakening. You said, Lord, uh, awake or sleep and arise from the dead and Christ will give you life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Awake. O oh, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Christ will give you life. Christ will give you freedom. In Jesus' name, Lord. So we, we thank you, Father, for what you're doing, Lord. Thank you that you are, you are stirring the hearts of the people of this nation, Lord God. You're stirring our hearts, Lord God. And we thank you for that fresh fire that only you can bring in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you, Father God, tonight, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name for this nation. We pray, Lord God, for all these people in this island, Lord, whether they see themselves as British or Irish or Northern Irish, Lord God, they are your people. You love them, Lord God. You love this nation, Lord. You love this island, Lord God. And I thank you, Father. Let your glory be poured out in our time, in our generation, in Jesus' name. We are hungry, Lord God. We are not satisfied with where we are. We're not satisfied, Lord. Lord, we know there is more and we want to see your power demonstrated in Jesus name praise God thank you father God praise God praise you Jesus praise you Jesus praise you Jesus oh so come shia la basate take it this is a praise God just begin to pray in the spirit for a moment praise you Jesus praise God thank you Lord we're just waiting right here praise God Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise God. Psalm 71, 18. Even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. Praise God. This is the time I believe God wants to show His power to the, to the next generation in Jesus' name. Oh, sokobatanime. Praise God, people. It's time to press in. It's time to press in, to go beyond where we've been in Jesus' name. It's time for us to press in, to contend for the faith, to contend for revival, to contend for that awakening in Jesus' name. Praise God, we're not here for church as usual. We're here for an awakening in Jesus' name. Glory to God, hallelujah, until I declare your power to the next generation. Glory to Jesus, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever in Jesus' name. Praise God, thank you, Lord. We're gonna see God's power in our generation in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. If you wanna say hello to somebody tonight, just bless them. Hallelujah in the presence of God. Tell them you look so good tonight. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Can you sense that in the air? I hope you're, I hope you're expecting. You know, I wanted to come up because we're going to go into a time of worship in a, in a while. Uh, but you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give, give a message first. But um, we're just going to take up the offering tonight. If you believe in what God is doing in this church, then get behind us and support us financially. Because you know what? We're believing God to, to buy a building. We're believing to, to drive a stake into the ground in this city. Hallelujah. We're believing that God's going to use us to start churches all over this nation. And uh, in, even in other nations in Jesus' name. But it takes money to do it. And so the Bible says, Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men press into your bosom. For with the same measure that you give, it will be given back to you. And maybe this is one reason why some people never experience breakthroughs because they never uh, go beyond their comfort zone in their giving. But you know what? We uh, ask you in Jesus' name, get behind us. If you're a taxpayer, uh, if you're legal, hallelujah. Uh, if you're not on the black market, 
If you are completely legit, then sign up for our gift aid and we can claim back money on what you give in Jesus' name. Amen? So if the ushers want to give out the baskets tonight, and uh, let's, let's give to the Lord in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It was so wonderful to stand outside City Hall in Belfast. Hallelujah. And we had our own, our own Cassie there leading worship today. She was leading worship and um, we were rushing back after uh, I got to pray. And, um, but, you know, we'd gone probably half a mile. I could still hear Cassie's voice going out over the city. Praise the Lord. Worship. Singing about the cross. Amen. So, uh, glory to Jesus. Uh, just two things. Uh, uh, normally, John does the analysis. I'm going to do the, the, um, the, the shorter version. Um, I'm just going to give you the headlines. Um, next weekend, we have our marriage on the rock, not on the rocks. Marriage on the rock. Um, so if you're married, uh, it's Friday and Saturday. But if you're engaged or planning to be married, um, uh, you, you can come as well. So if you're an engaged couple or you're, you're planning to get married in the next year, we encourage you to uh, sign up as well and come. Tonight's the last night you can sign up for it. So um, I encourage you to come. And let me say this. Don't come to me in three months' time asking for marriage counseling. First question... First question I'm going to ask you, where you at the marriage, because uh, listen, I used to work as a mechanic many years ago, and I understand prevention is much better than, uh, pre preventative maintenance is much better than waiting for the thing to blow up, and then you have to rebuild it, okay? So, I I'm going to, genuinely, I will ask you, if it's in six months time, I'm going to ask you, did you come? Did you make the effort? Oh, no, but, you know, my son's got soccer. And I, I got this, and I got that, and I got the other. Listen, you don't find time for what's important. You make time for what is important. If your marriage is important, make the time to come. Yeah, we're going to have some people helping with the kids. Now, if you're like us and you've got five kids, please don't do that to them. But um, I'm just saying, if you've got kids and you're stuck, come. Uh, if you're, you know, if you can't afford it, then look, come, and we'll cover that, but... Uh, uh, the other thing I want to announce is um, uh, Thursday the 9th of November. No, I, I'm, I'm not going to do it, honey. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I want to get into the message. Tonight, tonight we just want to flow. Amen? So um, j just the only other thing I wanted to announce, 9th of November, that's a Thursday night, uh, 7 p.m., we're going to have a Crystal Knocked commemoration. Hopefully, we're going to have a Holocaust speaker here. Um, uh, three years ago, we did it with Tommy Reichenthal, and um, he's, an, uh, 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 he's resident in Ireland. He's a Holocaust survivor, and, uh, but it's going to be a different, um, uh, it's a lady this time. And um, the, the, the reason why I think it's, it's important, um, because there's so much vitriol and hatred being poured out on the streets of our cities right now. Uh, against Israel, and I'm in no way claiming Israel are, are innocent, uh, they're not perfect, uh, no nation is, we're certainly far from perfect as a nation here in Ireland, but um, you know, the parallels to 1930s Germany, where uh, Kristallnacht is simply a, a commemoration of, uh, it's called the Night of the Broken Glass, where all the Jewish businesses, people threw rocks into them and and, uh, you know, burned them down, and, and, you know, Jews were killed that night in Germany, and it was the beginning of the persecution of the Jewish people, and so, um, uh, you know, the Jews commemorate that, and I think it, it's important for us, because, uh, you know, those who, who forget the lessons of history are destined to repeat them. That's why history is important, and that's why we need to be mindful of what has gone before us, because um, if, if, we, if we don't learn those lessons, like I said, and we're seeing those lessons repeated, uh, just yesterday, I was looking on Twitter, and an Irish TD was in a, in a shop, I think it was an Aldi or an Ikea, tearing uh, uh, Israeli products um, off the shelves, throwing them on the ground, um, uh, uh, feeling justified in doing that. And, and again, I think the parallels between what happened in 1913s Germany is, is quite disturbing. And like I said, the hatred that's being poured out on our streets, you know, tens of thousands of people, I think it was something like 100,000 in London yesterday, and, um, you know, to hear people, to, to see people carrying ISIS flags... In, in, in Great Britain, on the streets, um, you know, to he hear people crying out, uh, um, uh, intifada, you know, the last intifada, over a thousand Israelis were murdered, uh, you know, celebrating and, and justifying, um, you know, the murder of 
And uh, any of you that have looked into what happened in, in Israel, it's indefensible. There is no justification. There is no explanation. Um, it was just blind hatred. And, uh, I, I, and, and so, again, I think, you know, as the church, we have a part to play in, 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 in standing up, speaking up, and saying, you know, never again really must mean never again. And so, uh, I, 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 I don't know about you. I know a lot of Christians really couldn't care, you know, about the Jewish people or about the nation of Israel, but um, in all good conscience, I, I cannot take all of the blessings God has given to me through this Bible, through this book, which came through the Jewish people, and dismiss it as irrelevant and disconnected from the Jewish people today. We, we have a debt to pay. We, we, you know, I, I, I don't know about you, I, I truly feel uh, you know, a sense of debt, a sense of gratitude, um, and, and this is why this hatred um, for the Jewish people um, it's an unreasoning hatred, it's, it's an irrational hatred, and it's, it's an undying hatred. We, we, we see it, you know, thousands and thousands of years, wherever they've been, they've been persecuted, they've been hated, they've been misrepresented, they've been attacked, they've been murdered. And uh, I, I believe the reason why is because Christ our Savior came through the Jews, the scriptures, the prophets, the kings, etc. And, uh, you know, the light that has, has really taken us out of the darkness of paganism and wickedness and and. and you know, perversion, that the, the word of God, which set us free, came through the Jewish people. God revealed himself to and through the Jewish people. And so, uh, I, I, again, it doesn't matter if the whole world is, is, is out there marching. Uh, you know, as a pastor, I'm going to stand with the Jewish people, and, and I'm going to bless the nation of Israel. And so I think it's important to commemorate. Um, yeah. So um, that's the ninth. That'll be, uh, that, that's Thursday week. And uh, like I said, we're, we're hoping it's going to be just a night to remember and, and, and a night to show, show respect, um, uh, you know, to, to the Jewish people. And, um, and, and again, I, I, I shouldn't have to say it, but, you know, loving the Jewish people doesn't mean hating the Palestinian people, okay? God loves the Palestinian people, okay? But the problem is they're being run by a terrorist organization, that, that celebrates murder, not just of Jewish people, but celebrates the murder of their own people because it gets them headlines. And, and so th this is the times we're in. We are in the times where biblical prophecy is being fulfilled before our eyes. You know, if you're sitting on the fence, you're lukewarm. This is not a time to be lukewarm. This is a time to live for Jesus. This is a time to, 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 to walk on that narrow pathway because the return of Christ is, is, is a lot nearer than... Than, than some of us might imagine, amen? So let's stand to our feet. We're going to get into the message tonight, the touch of God. How many of you tonight would like a fresh touch from God? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Well, the Bible says, Hebrews 13 and 8, I quoted already, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I think it is, it is, it is tragic that, that so many churches, the Jesus they speak of is a historical Jesus because there is no demonstration, there is no miracles, there is no deliverance, there is no freedom, there is no anointing. Jesus did not die to give us religion, he died to give us a relationship. And so he is a living Savior. He is the same. And, and if we as a people will press in, we can have the same miracles that they saw in, in, the, in the Gospels. Because Jesus is alive. That is the message of the Gospels. And yet too many times we want to sing the songs, you know, about how he opened the grave and he's alive and, and all this. But, but many times we, 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 we sing about a, a God that is alive, but we live like, there is, like he's a God that is dead. But you know what? Tonight I want, to, I want to talk about the touch of God. And I want to start by reading Matthew uh, chapter 8 and verse um, 1 to 4. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes, we can read it together. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I'm willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. You may be seated.
Jesus put out his hand and touched him. How many of you remember that, that lovely old hymn? Um, he touched me. Amen? Because let me say this. When God touches your life, you can never be the same again. Just one touch from Jesus, and just like this man, your life will be forever changed. Jesus was walking down the mountain, the Bible says, and he was just after giving the greatest sermon ever spoken, the Sermon on the Mount. And he was accompanied by a large, adoring crowd. I mean, he was probably tired, and um, he could have dismissed the leper, therefore, as an unwanted distraction. And um, after all, he had places to go, things to do. And not, not only could he have looked at him as being an unwanted distraction, but he could have looked at him as being an unwanted follower. Because after all, who wants to be known as the man who draws lepers to their meetings? I'm sure that wasn't very popular. But he stopped and he touched him. Because with Jesus, it was always about the one. And, and through a simple touch, Jesus demonstrated not only his power to heal, but he demonstrated his love, his kindness, his mercy, and his compassion. And this man's life was never the same again. Because when God touches your life, you can never be the same again. Mark chapter 5 and verse 21. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by the boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw me, fell at his feet, and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a great, now, <clears throat> just for the sake of time, we're just going to move on to verse 35. And, you know, a woman would issue blood, held things up. Any of you who are married knows, know that pain when you want to get out the door. Um, but um, <laughs> while he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. You know, every one of us are tempted to give in to fear. Sometimes we can wake up in the middle of the night with fear and panic trying to get a hold of us. It's amazing, isn't it, how, how fear can, can shake you and wake you up. And suddenly the devil starts to play in, in, in you, you know, full HD, full surround sound, all the things that could go wrong in your life. And, but, but, you know, Jesus immediately dealt with fear. Because the Bible says God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but when a power of love and a sound mind. It's so important, you know, that we live in a day where we must choose faith, not fear. Amen? Because, you know, the media, uh, politics, you know, uh, business, everything is, is centered around creating a sense of fear, a sense of inadequacy, a sense of anxiety so you can be manipulated and controlled. But it's amazing, when you get set free from fear, you can't be controlled anymore. And you become dangerous. And anyway, immediately Jesus said, don't be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then he came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult and those who wept and wailed loudly. When he came in, he said to them, why this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. I, 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 I find it quite ironic the way, uh, you know, in one moment they're crying, next thing they're laughing at him. Um, you know, goes to show that, you know, that, that their mourning was just superficial. But I, I like what Jesus, I like what Jesus did. Um, but when he had put them all outside, amen, he just, he just put them all outside. You see, Jesus, this is what I love about Jesus is he didn't play games. He didn't play games with people. He was, he was, he knew what he was called to do and he didn't apologize for doing it. Because, you know, the Amplified in verse 36 of chapter 5, overhearing but ignoring what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear. Only keep on believing. Overhearing but ignoring. Because you know what? In your life, you're going to have people who are going to try and speak over you. 
You're going to have people who are going to try to limit you. You're going to have people who are going to try and put you into a box and tell you you can't. Well, you know what? When God has told you to, to do something, it's so important to, to, to press ahead. And this is why, again, if you want to run your race, I'm not talking about being rebellious. I'm not talking about being obnoxious. But I am talking about having the discernment to know friend from foe. To know those whom you listen to and those whom you ignore. And for some of you, it's not another person. It's the voice inside your own head. Overhearing but ignoring. And again, here Jesus just puts those who are full of unbelief outside. And you know what? If you want to fulfill your calling, there there are people you're going to have to keep at an arm's length. We love everybody, but some people we love from a distance. Because I'm not going to allow somebody breathing down me with their, you know, their hot breath of unbelief. And just, you know, limiting me, telling me you can't, you can't, you can't. It's impossible. No, all things are possible with God. Hallelujah. The moment, the moment you got saved, you got connected with the supernatural power of God. All things are possible for those who believe. And so he put them outside and... <clears throat> He took the father and mother of the child and those who were with him entered the, uh, where the child was. And then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha, which is uh, Kuma, which is translated, little girl, I said you arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked. She was dead. But one touch from Jesus and she was alive. He, he took her by the hand. The touch of Jesus brought life to this little girl. Immediately the girl rose and walked, for she was 12 years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. And um, I, I love this, this part. It says, but he commanded them strictly that no one should know it and, sent, and said that something should be given her to eat. Isn't it beautiful how Christ cares about the smallest things? And, you know, as you know, little kids are always hungry. I used to always laugh, you know, uh, up to five, six years ago, our house was constantly covered in crumbs. We could hoover the car, uh, hoover the house one, once, once a day. Because uh, sometimes I used to think, you know, little kids just, just have a little tr- trail of crumbs following them wherever they go. Because kids are always hungry. But it's, isn't it beautiful how Jesus taught about give, give the kids something, something to eat. Just one touch from Jesus and you receive whatever you need. Even death in its finality had no power To resist the touch of Jesus. And if you have dead areas in your life tonight. Amen. If you have areas in your life that are dead. He can bring life and liberty through just one touch. Because the gospels are filled with with occasions and accounts of Jesus. Physically touching people and making them whole. You see God longs to heal your life. He longs to touch your life. Because once he touches you. You can never be the same again. Amen. Once he touches you, you can never be satisfied by the things of this world again. The poster behind me um, is taken uh, from the creation of Adam. Um, uh, Lynette added a little bit of color to it, you know, just to improve um, Michelangelo's effort. But um, in essence, it's a fresco painting by the Italian artist Michelangelo, which forms part of the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in Rome, Italy, and it was po- painted between 1508 and 1512, and it illustrates the biblical account of the creation of Adam as recorded in the book of Genesis, in which God, the creator of all life, gives life to Adam, the very first man. And while the fingers of Adam and God don't actually touch in the painting, it symbolizes how God is the source of all things, because the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. Acts chapter 17 and verse 20. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, you men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, Dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's hands as though he needed anything, seeing as he giveth to all life and breath and all things, 
and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. That's why racism is so stupid. The Bible says God is made of one blood all nations of men. That's why, again, uh, it's... It's a nice thing to be proud of where you come from, but there's a line you shouldn't cross over because it can become superiority, arrogance, and pride. And pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. I find it quite ironic, people taking pride in their color, their skin. You had nothing to do with it. You had absolutely nothing to do with it. Why would you take pride in something like that? It's just a, a characteristic. It's part of who you are. It's a consequence of who your mother and father were. It's nothing to be ashamed of, but it's nothing to, to look down on somebody else either. And so, again, God had made of one blood all men. And, uh, you know, we, we might look different on the inside, but, you know, if you cut us, we all bleed red. And it says, And he has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if happily that they might feel after him and find him, though he's not far from every one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As certain of your prophets have said, of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. For in so much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he hath ordained, uh, whereof he has given assurance unto all men, and that he has raised him from the dead. You see, God is the creator of all men, and we must therefore serve him humbly and gladly. But as for those who deny his existence, his goodness, his lordship, his truth, or his sovereignty, it will not go well either in this life or the next. Because how can it? Because we can't be satisfied by the things of this world. And without God, nothing, and I mean nothing, makes sense. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 10. Solomon was a man who, who had been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt. He tried everything, but he says here, he who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. Nor he who loves abundance would increase. This also is vanity. When goods increase, they increase also that eat them. So what profit have the owners except to see them with their eyes? And so here it says, he who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. You see, life will always leave you empty, dissatisfied, and disillusioned. And this is why Michelangelo left a gap between the finger of God and the finger of man. Because it was symbolic of the fact that ultimately perfection is impossible in this life. We're, we reach for it. We, we do our best. But we always fall short. And, 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 and again, I believe that in itself is an indication of, you know, this is not our home. We were not designed to live here forever. Heaven is our home. And I believe God, you know, has, has created that dissatisfaction on the inside of us because... Whatever it is you aspire to or reach for, so many times you see people who reach the pinnacle. We, we, we see Matthew Perry to, he, he, this weekend sadly, sadly died, you know, world, world famous, you know, uh, highly successful, wealthy. And, and yet, when you, when you look at many of these successful people and, you know, struggling with, with uh, alcoholism and addiction and, you know, depression and despair, and you're wondering, you know, I mean, they, they, they don't lack for anything, and yet there is an emptiness. Because, you know, without God, nothing will make sense. Nothing will work. And, and so, anyway, don't turn your back on God. Don't ignore or neglect your relationship with Him. You've been invited into the King's service. So don't resist or delay. Jonah 2 and verse 8. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. The NIV. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. The NLV, those who worship false gods, turn their backs on all God's mercies. And you know, you can make a false god out of, out of anything in this world. And, and it's so important, again, that we, we, we keep that principle, seek first the kingdom of God. God comes first. God comes first. And the church needs to rediscover that. God comes first. 
That means you bring your kids to church Sunday morning rather than to ballet or soccer or rugby or whatever else. Because when you do that, you are teaching your children that church and by implication God is not really that important. Silence of the lambs. God comes first. Teach them. Train up a child in the way in which they shall go. When they're old, they will not turn from it. You see, when you decide I'm going to go to church once a month or twice a month and the rest of the time you're taking them to training or to matches or whatever else, what you're doing is you're showing them that it's not that important. And then you act surprised when they get to the point where they can make decisions for themselves and they don't bother going to church at all. You trained them. You played a part. Those who worship false gods turn their backs on all God's mercies. Many miss out on the touch of God because they are idolaters. They love sleep or sex or food or money or popularity or entertainment more than God. I mean, if some of you spent a quarter of the time in the Bible that you spend on Instagram or Facebook or Netflix or whatever else, you would be a giant of the faith. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And so many times we look at a hedonistic world and all their perversion and sin and say, that's them. Hey, that is us. But let me say this. It's easier to get up in the morning when you remind yourself that the king of kings is waiting for you downstairs. Do you cherish the touch of God on your life? Are you actively pursuing it? So this isn't an exhaustive list. I'm going to go through it quickly. But I want to share some secrets to the touch of God. And the first one is this, prayer. Prayer is key to the touch of God on your life. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Pray. Prayer is key to the touch of God. Psalm 63 in verse 1. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Charles Spurgeon. Nine times out of ten, falling away from God begins in the neglect of private prayer. Are you neglecting prayer? Hosea 10 and verse 12. Sow to yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord. Fallow ground is a field that's been left go fallow. And the ground gets hard like concrete. And you have to drive the plow through it. Well, the Bible says, you know what? Break up your fallow ground. You know, allow the word of, a word of God to, to, to break through those hard and, and dry and rebellious places in your life. It's time to seek the Lord. I, I knelt by the foot of my bed. And prayed a very simple prayer at 18 years of age. And my life was not only changed, my life actually begun. In that moment, when I prayed that one simple prayer, my life actually begun. I felt like my mom had asked me to pray the prayer of salvation a few days earlier with her. And I obliged. It didn't change me because I resented her, you know, praying. And making me pray when I was on my way to a race and a bike race. And, um, but, but, you know, the Holy Spirit brought those words back to me. And on my knees, I felt the Lord saying, do you believe it? And I said, yes, Lord. I do believe you died for my sins. I do believe you rose from the dead. And in that moment, I, I, it's like I was hit by electricity. And it's like somebody poured honey on my head. And I had this supernatural experience right there in my bed on my own after praying three Hail Marys and three Our Fathers. And then saying, Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross. I was transformed. I never went back to the nightclubs, the parties, the women, the alcohol, or the enemy. Because I had a taste of something that was not of this world. Psalm 34 and verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, sometimes we're, we're inviting people to come to something that we haven't actually experienced ourselves. In, in many years. But, but since that time, I can say some of my most precious experiences and memories have been on my own in the early hours of the morning. 
You know, like I said, we had five kids, and I was working full time. And so if I wanted to, you know, prepare a message, I had to get up at four or five o'clock in the morning and, 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 and do it. And the uh, same in Bible school because, you know, I just cherished those times on my own. I love the, the quiet hours of the morning just being on my own because this, this you know, let, let me share a secret with you. Uh, the Israelites had to get up early to get the manna. Those who slept in, it was gone. The, the, the revelation I get when I teach the Word of God, most of that I've gotten the early hours of the morning. I, I don't know why it works that way, but it just does. There's something about prior, prioritizing time with God. It'll change your life. I, I was captivated by one touch from God. 1992, a year later, I went to a conference in Belfast. In Belfast. It was a powerful service, it was, and, and I remember I was walking back to the B&B, and, and I met some local girls going out. They were all dressed up, and they were very friendly, and, and one girl got right in my face, said, you know, you're very, you're very good looking. I said, yeah, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but I, I know what she was, she, she, they wanted me to go with them out, out to wherever they were going, and, <laughs> you know, the, but I kept walking. I can't say I wasn't tempted. I was. I, 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 wasn't, I, I was saved, but I wasn't sanctified. Okay, so I was just, I was barely saved. But um, I kept walking because I just had a sense of God from that service. I, I, I had a deep longing for something more, and I just instinctively knew I wasn't going to find it in a bar or a nightclub in Belfast. And, and so I, I walked back because let me say, when God's about to do something, the devil likes to jump in and distract you. He will do his very best to distract you. And you know what? Particularly when you're reaching for something great, sometimes he'll just give you something good. And that's why many times people accept that. They accept less than God's best. And so the enemy will try to distract you. But I was hungry for God. I was hungry in all sorts of ways because um, I'd run out of money. And so I was staying in a B&B. B&B was paid for, so I had breakfast. But that was it, man. I was on my own for the rest of the day. So I was, I was hungry as I went back to that little B&B. But um, in, in that bedroom that night, I was on my own. And as I prayed, God visited me. That's all I can say. He visited me in a very powerful way again. And, and I came to the place where I surrendered all. The power of God filled that room and, and God touched me. I, I, I can't, you know, I didn't physically see something, but I, I felt it like I never felt before. And I answered the call of God in my life in that little room in Belfast. That is where I answered the call of God because up to that moment, I'd been holding back on God. I was trying to keep everybody else happy. Um, you know, I wasn't in the world. I wasn't living in sin as such, but, but I still had not let go. I was still clinging to the old life. Um, you know, I was meant to take over my dad's uh, business, and I, I was going along with it, even though I knew I was called to the ministry because... Uh, I was afraid of the unknown, and I didn't know how I could actually go into the ministry. But it's, it's amazing here, over 30 years later, here I stand. You know, God, God is a miracle-working God. He doesn't need you to know how. He just needs you to say yes. That's all. That's all. In that room, I came to the place of surrender, and I said, yes. Like I said, I was going along with everybody else's plan for my life because I didn't want to make waves my, with my family because they already thought I was nuts. And I didn't want to dis disappoint my father who, who really could not understand what had come over me. He couldn't understand why I didn't want to go out and drink and chase women. And um, instead, I was reading my Bible and, you know, up, up in the shed at night, uh, my dad had a shed and, and I used to go up there and pray and, and just pray in tongues. And I remember one night I was up in the shed praying and, and uh, I was praying in tongues and next thing, my, my, my dad, he threw a block of timber at the shed. It was a tin shed. And I opened the door. I came out of my prayer closet. There's my father. And he said, uh, I, I heard you praying. You, you, you said, go get the Catholics. And <laughs> I, I didn't. It must have sounded like that, I guess. But uh, I, was, I was praying in tongues. My dad was freaked out. He just could not understand. He thought I was losing my mind. And um, so... so so I just closed the door to the shed and went back in. And, um, 
But uh, so, anyway, <laughs> my dad couldn't understand what had come over me. And, and as well as on, the, on top of all that, I was in a relationship that I knew in my heart wasn't of God. But I was being emotionally manipulated to stay because when I tried to break it up, turn on the tears and, 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 and like, you know, when a woman starts crying, a guy just doesn't know what to do. Just like, <laughs> and, and so then I started doubting myself and you get emotionally involved. But th- that night when God's glory filled the room and he touched me, I surrendered everything. My past, my present, my future, my strengths, my weaknesses, my fears, and this relationship. And, and in that moment, something in me came alive. And something in me died. God called me and cleansed me and killed me. And that's where some of you need to come to. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the cost of discipleship, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. That's why Paul was able to say, for me to live as Christ, to die is gain. He was already a dead man. That's why he wasn't afraid. That's why he wasn't controlled. He had already died. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I who live, but Christ lives in me. And that is what happens when you surrender to the call of God. That's what happens when you surrender to him is in, in prayer is God takes over. And in that moment, the fear of what people might think of me if I really gave my all to God and really lived for him died. I ended the relationship the very next day, and I had such a sense of joy. And I remember the girl got so mad when she met me on the street the day after. She said, you looked so happy. She got so angry. But I was happy because I'd obeyed God. (laughs) You know, I had no friends left. I no longer had a girlfriend. Everybody thought I was nuts. But I'd said yes to the call of God. And that's why I had a joy. I had a joy. Glory to God. How many of you know that song? This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Yo, This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. No, the world didn't give it in. The world can't take it away. Pentecostal shuffle. I had joy. (laughs) I I really struggled to put into words the holy, powerful, peaceful, precious, glorious, loving presence that invaded that room. But all I can say is God touched my life and I was never the same. And when God touches you, you can't remain the same because chains are broken, burdens are lifted, and our hearts are forever changed when the Lord touches you. Jesus, let's turn to Luke chapter 13 and verse 10. And here we see, um, now he's teaching the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there is a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to himself and said to her, woman, you are loosed. From your infirmity, he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days in which men ought to work. Therefore come be healed in them, and not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord answered and said, hypocrite, does not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or donkey? from the stall, and lead it away to water it. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound. That's why those who try to say, sickness is, this is my cross to carry, you're deceived. Anytime Jesus addressed sickness, he always addressed it as coming from the enemy. It's not a blessing, it's not a gift, it's not a cross, it's not God perfecting you. It's an assignment of the enemy against your life. And that's why Jesus said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, be loosed from this bondage on the Sabbath. And um, so, (laughs) praise the Lord. 18 years of pain. And paralysis, but just one touch set her free. And maybe there are people here today, and you're bound 
by alcohol or pornography or addiction or gambling or drugs or maybe you're in despair or maybe you've all sorts of other issues going on. Let me say this. We serve a God who still serves, who still sets the captives free. And, and, and this is why prayer is so powerful. I know it's a cliche that prayer changes things, but it truly does. You know, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. I desire therefore that the men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. I, I desire that men pray everywhere. Men, you need to be men of prayer. Don't, don't just leave that to your wife. Don't just say that's, that's just for women. No, biblically speaking, you should be the, 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 the prophet and priest in your home. You should be rising early to seek the Lord because as God blesses you, he will bless your family. And so I, I desire that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. God has called us as men to walk in, in holiness and to live holy lives without wrath and doubting. Psalm 109 verse 4, in return for my love, they are my accusers, but I give myself to prayer. I, I give myself to prayer. Have you given yourself to prayer? You know, Jesus healed his mother-in-law with just one touch in Mark 1, 31. Mark 1, 35 says, Jesus rose a long time before daylight, went to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Do you want to be like Jesus? Do you want to be like Jesus? Some of you are not convinced. Then we should follow his example, and we should be people of prayer. Prayer must be our first point of, of, of contact, must be our first response, not our last. And so, again, it says we rise early to pray and seek the Lord that we receive his touch on our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Is, is uh, Naima here? I, I just wanted Naima. We're, we're talking about the touch of God. And, you know, Naima is a wonderful young lady. Come on up here, Naima. Uh, you know, Naima is a lady that God, God touched her life. And I, I just wanted her to tell a little bit of, of her story. And then we're going to go back into a time of worship. And, um, you know, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And, and so Naima's going to tell you a little bit of her story, and then we're just going to uh, jump in. One, two. This is working. <laughs> Thank you. Um, hi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I will share about how I experienced the touch of God. Um, and since then, I've never been the same again. So I'm just going to talk about how I was before just a little bit, just to walk you through. Uh, the background. Um, I was, um, I'm an ex-Muslim, so I was a Muslim before, and I was brought up in a fairly um, religious household, and I tried to pray in a Muslim way five times a day, and I was reading Quran, and I was uh, following the teaching of Islam um, as much as I could. Um, the old me was um, timid, lacked um, self-esteem, I was very shy, and um, I struggled with my identity. And um, at a very early age, I experienced a rejection from the very start. Um, I never met my father, my biological father, and I never knew the reason why he never wanted to see me. So, uh, and I only had my mom and I didn't have any siblings. So um, 
my mom then passed away and she was diagnosed with motor neuron disease and um, she passed away. And after her passing, um, I had a difficult time. I was asking these kind of questions, why I don't have a family, why um, I haven't seen my dad, why I'm the one who's alone and who doesn't have a home. So these were the questions that I kept asking and I felt very alone. And I felt, I knew that I'm an orphan. And I tried to look for hope in people, in, in places and stuff, but, but I couldn't find it. And um, I wouldn't go much into detail in, with that, but circums circumstances took such a turn that I found myself in Ireland. And even here, um, uh, one thing after another, just the things weren't go going right. And I felt stuck. I felt that there's no way out. I didn't know where I was going, or what's happening with my life. And I, it went to the stage where I, it, I got really suicidal. Um, I didn't know why I'm here in this world. I didn't know the purpose of my life. So while I was in this dark place, I met Jesus. Um, I didn't know the real Jesus. I only knew um, from what the uh, teachings of Islam taught that Jesus is only a prophet. I didn't know uh, that Jesus is God. I didn't know um, what he has done for me on the cross at that time. And nobody ever told me before that. So, but I found myself here, I'm talking about eight, about eight years ago, I found myself um, around uh, some believers and I had conversations with them. And those conversations led me to think, um, what if Jesus is real? And I started questioning my, my belief. That led me to exploring and researching more about Islam, uh, I just went deep into understanding what it's about. But at the same time, I started asking questions to God. And I asked God, God, if Jesus is real, and if he is your son, you need to come and tell me yourself, because there's no other way I'm going to believe that. Because my whole life, that means, like, if you are a Muslim, it's like your whole identity. And that, that would have meant that my whole life is a lie. So. It was a very emotional journey, and it didn't happen overnight, so it happened over a period of one year or so. But I kept asking these things to God, and um, then one day, uh, while all this was happening through my, my head, I found a book laying around, and the title of the book was, I Dare to Call You Father, and it was written by a Pakistani author, um, and I just picked it up. And I said, I'm going to read it. So I read through it. The book was about a Muslim uh, a Pakistani woman and how she met Jesus and her journey. Um, I didn't want to read the book, but I finished it. And I thought this book is just corrupting my thoughts in my head. And I shouldn't be reading it. But anyways, um, I left it to where I found it, but I finished reading it. So I kept asking God, I'm at this crossroad. And... I just don't know whatever I believe in. Is that the true path? Or is Jesus real? And is that the true path? So I was asking God, what is the true true path? And one thing from that book stuck to me was um, a scripture, Revelation um, 3.20, that Jesus knocks on the door, and if you open it, he comes in. So then I started talking to Jesus. I'm like, Jesus, are you real? <laughs> are you up there? If you are, my door's open and my heart's open. So uh, if you are knocking, you can just come in. You don't have to knock. <laughs> so um, after that, I, I'm just summarizing it, but I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw Jesus, and Jesus said, Naima, uh, you would know in your heart what's the true path. 
And that's the question I was asking to God. And he knew my name. And then I had a second dream. And in that dream, it was me and Jesus again. And I was levitating in the air. And then another minute, I was down in some pit. And then I came out of it. And I was just, it was a white light all around me. And that was it. That was the two dreams I had. And when I woke up, uh, I knew what's the true path. And I knew that Jesus is real, without a doubt. I had no doubts in my, my heart. So that was the touch of God. And since then, I was a new creation. I, I was a new person. I knew that I belonged to the kingdom, kingdom of light. I was not an orphan anymore. I knew that I have a father, and a father who calls me by a name, a father who calls me princess. Um, I have a family, family in Christ. And also, I've got my husband somewhere back there. <laughs> I recently um, started working for a big multinational company as well. And I walk in blessings of God every day. Like every day is a testimony. I no longer feel rejected, abandoned, broken, alone. I'm made whole. I'm surrounded by his love. And I'm filled with his spirit and joy. And those are the changes that happen. It might be just saying things. But you know, my whole life is being trans transformed by the just touch of God. And I pray that if you're listening today... By listening to how God touched me, it will touch, touch your hearts as well. Amen. Thank you. Anyone has questions? Yeah, the worship team can come forward. Um, praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> um. Naima, t tell me this. How did, you, how did you come to all nations? Uh, I forgot to mention that bit. Sorry. Yeah, you're on. Okay. Yeah, go on. So, um, yeah, when, when I had these dreams and I started believing that Jesus is real, um, a few weeks later, I happened to be in all nations. There were a few people who were coming here, so they, they recommended that I could go there because I've been asking where could I go. So I came here. But, yeah, I didn't know anything about altar call or anything. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't answer the call that day. And um, I came two weeks later again. And you were, you were preaching about who Jesus is. He's not just a friend, but who he is. And then at the altar call, you said, close your eyes and, you know, <laughs> bow down your head. So I did that. And just before I did that, um, I saw Jesus. I just few seats um, next to me on my right hand side and he saw and he smiled at me and and I closed my eyes <laughs> <laughs> Kian come up I want to pray with you both <laughs> praise the Lord you know I was privileged to walk Naima up the aisle yeah praise the Lord you know Naima was so faithful Every week, you know, she types in hundreds of scriptures. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Sunday mornings, she used to be there. And I used to pass her and say, Naima, God's going to give you a lovely Irish husband. <laughs> Look at this hunk of a man. <laughs> you know, you guys are so beautiful together. I, I always get so touched by that story to think that Jesus was sitting right there in the congregation. Probably thinking, God, will this guy ever finish? <laughs> Could you just stretch your hands towards Kian and Naima? Lord, I know you have a great plan and a purpose, Lord. And Father, I'm I, I just so grateful that you're appearing to Muslims in, in their dreams. Because you love Muslims, Lord God. You love Muslims, you love Hindus, 
You love Jews, Lord God. You love every person, whether they have faith or whether they have none. You love them. You died for them. And you want them to know you. And so, Lord, I just pray, Father, for, for Naima and Kian, Lord, that you would bless them and that you would use them to win many souls to you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, for Naima's willingness to answer the call. And I thank you that you touched her life, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that you touched Kian's life, Lord God. I remember him telling me about how at one stage he was homeless and addicted on the streets of, of, of the United Kingdom. Lord, you brought him from such a dark place, Lord God, but I thank you, Lord God, that, that one touch and you set him free, Lord. And Lord, I just pray, Father, that you would anoint them both, Lord God. Use them for your glory. Use them for your kingdom, Lord God. Use them to reach the broken. Use them to reach the lost. Use them to reach the religious. Use them to reach the irreligious, Lord God. Use them for your glory, I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Lord, that they not only found you, they found each other. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. And Lord, I'm privileged to call to be their pastor, Lord. I just pray a blessing on them both in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Well done, Naima. Praise the Lord. Could you stand to your feet tonight? We just want to go into uh, just a little bit of, 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 of worship. I know it's getting, it's getting on, and, but you know what? I believe God wants to touch people here tonight. You know, if you're sick, He wants to touch you. If you're oppressed, He wants to touch you. If you're lonely or afraid, he wants to touch you because one touch from him and you can never be the same again. One touch from Jesus. One touch from Jesus. I, I find it so amazing that even in your dreams, he can touch you. Just like he did for Naima. So, you know, tomorrow is a bank holiday. Most of you have nothing to do tomorrow. Let's just take some time in his presence. In His presence is fullness of joy. Lord, we just repent in Jesus' name for being in such a, a hurry. Lord, we repent of, of rushing in and rushing out, rushing in and giving you a list and rushing back out again. Lord, help us to just take some time tonight to minister to you in worship in Jesus' name. We don't have to go long, but let's, let's, let's give God the worship that belongs to Him. Forget about the person next to you. Don't let this just be a song. Let it be a prayer. Let's connect with Him tonight as we worship Him and give Him the glory that He is so worthy of. Because just like that service where Naima looked over and there was Jesus. Hallelujah. He's with us here tonight. He said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. He said, we're two or more gathered in my name. There I am in their midst. So let's just, let's just begin to move into time of worship. Amen.
Revelation 19 and verse 6. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and the voice of many waters and the voice of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. For the Lord, the ruler of all, reigns. You see, our God reigns. And I just sense the Spirit of God saying so strongly tonight. He must reign in our hearts. He must be more than simply Savior. He must be Lord. So let's sing that chorus again. And let's just make it a prayer tonight. Make it a dedication right now. Make an altar right where you are. And surrender all to Him. Tonight make that decision. Then I heard something like the voice of a mass multitude. Like the sound of cascading waters. And like the rumblings of loud thunder saying, Hallelujah. Because our Lord God, the Almighty, reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Just say tonight, Lord, reign in me. Reign in me. Let's lift our voice again in Jesus' name. Lift your voice to the Lord tonight. Come on, tell him. He reigns. He is worthy.
Father, you see every person. You see every need, every circumstance, every situation, every problem, every trial, every test, every bondage, every iniquity, every addiction. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you right now for touching your people at the point of their need. In Jesus' name, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke sickness and disease. We command every sickness and disease, loose your hold on God's people in Jesus name every bondage every iniquity every addiction we command it break right now in Jesus name go in Jesus name every unclean thing in the name of Jesus you have no right you have no place in Jesus name you have no place here because our God reigns he reigns in us and because he reigns in us sickness cannot reign because he reigns in us fear and panic and depression cannot reign because he reigns in us poverty and oppression cannot reign lord we worship you we praise you and we thank you right now lord god touch your people touch your people in jesus name touch them lord touch them in jesus name touch them let the power of your spirit touch them in jesus name may they never be the same again lord in jesus name hallelujah let those chains break let those chains break in the name of jesus hallelujah let those burdens be lifted in jesus name come on just sing it tonight our god reigns come on hallelujah praise god lift your voice and praise hallelujah declare it tonight our God reigns. Sing like Jesus is in the room. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus said that God is looking for those who worship him in spirit and truth. Can we just sing that one more time? Come on, let's just, one more time, just, just tell the Lord. He reigns. He is Lord. is going to come when we're going to stand in his presence those gates of pearl are going to open and our feet are going to stand on streets of gold we're going to behold our savior we're going to see the face of god we're going to hear the song of the redeemed through the ages lifting their voices in praise to god and we're going to sing that our God reigns. Don't talk about Islamic extremism. Don't talk about the WEF, the New World Order, or any of these other agendas that are at play. 
Our God reigns. Our God reigns. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Our God reigns. Don't talk about, don't talk about your addictions. Don't talk about your bondages. Just declare our God reigns. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We sing the song of the redeemed. Our God reigns. The best is yet to come. We have nothing to fear. Don't talk about the Antichrist. Don't talk about the mark of the beast. Don't talk about these things as if there's something you're to be afraid of. Our God reigns. Don't talk about World War III and all these other things that might come. No, our God reigns. Our God reigns, come what may. He reigns. He sits on the throne. One more time, let's enter into that chorus and make it a declaration of faith, a declaration of freedom. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. He is Lord. He is King. And He is coming again. Glory to God. Come on. Lift your voice. Let's lift the roof. music, just the voices. Come on. Our God. Just lift your hand and say, Lord, touch me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just, just lift up your problems, your challenges, whatever it is. Just receive freedom tonight in Jesus' name. Receive freedom in His presence. No more addiction. No more depression. No more dysfunction. No more anxiety. No more fear or confusion. The Son sets free, is free indeed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Oh, we love you. We receive you. We honor you. We enthrone you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in our hearts and our homes. Have your way in this church. Have your way in this city and in our nation. Lord, you reign. You reign. Oh. If you believe he reigns, give him a shout of praise tonight. He's coming again. With every head bowed and every eye closed for one moment. I don't want to finish the service without giving you an opportunity. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. If you've never been saved. If you've never come to that place that I came to at the foot of my bed. 
where I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. You can do it tonight before we finish. If you would like to surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, because there is no greater touch than the touch you receive when you give your heart to Jesus. Because it's more than a touch. He comes to live inside your heart. And so tonight, if you don't have that assurance that heaven is your home, if you've never surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to do so now. So if you're not saved, and you don't have that assurance that you have been born again, that Christ is Lord and Savior, put your hand up tonight and I'm going to pray for you. Is there anybody tonight, you've never surrendered your life? I see those, I see that hand. God bless you. Anybody else here tonight? I see those hands. God bless you, kids. Anybody else here tonight? You're ready to surrender to Jesus. You want Jesus to be Lord of your life. Don't miss this moment. Don't let pride stop you. Don't defy the Holy Spirit of God when He is moving. If you know you're not right with God, put your hand up and we're going to pray for you as well. This isn't about embarrassing you. I see that hand. God bless you. This is about you just simply saying yes. Just like Naima. Jesus appeared to, to her in her dream. But she still had to say yes. If you've never said yes to Jesus, this is your moment. Put your hand up if you know you're not right with the Lord. But tonight, you want Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Could those of you put your hand up? Just come down here. And we're going to pray a simple prayer tonight in Jesus' name. The Lord's going to do a miracle in your heart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, that's beautiful. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. you. Just stand there for one moment. Just stand here at the front and we're going to pray. Come on, these, these young ladies. Hallelujah. You're giving your heart to Jesus tonight. Amen. Stay here, girls. We're going to pray a very simple prayer, okay? And the Lord's going to do a miracle in your heart. Amen. Praise God. Is there anybody else here tonight? Don't miss this moment. If you know you're meant to be down here, come on. Praise the Lord. <laughs> this is wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Don't miss the moment. He's still mighty to save. I don't know where you've been or what you've done, but the Lord can do a miracle in your heart tonight. Just stretch your hands towards them and just pray the simple prayer tonight. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in my heart that you were born of a virgin, that you lived a perfect life, and that when you died on the cross, you died in my place, bearing my sin and shame. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus Christ, and forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. You are now Lord of my life. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're going to just say a simple prayer for, for all these ladies tonight. Tonight's ladies' night. And uh, we're back tomorrow, uh, next Sunday at 7, uh, 7 a.m. 11 a.m. We love you. Thank you for coming tonight. And take the touch of God with you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.